Joining me now is Nader Porhasan. He's the CEO of Cytodyne Inc., trading on the OTC under the symbol CYDY. Nader, welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, Nader, we're very interested to hear about your uh, late stage uh, Lironlamab product, Pro 140, uh, that is being explored for therapeutic indications associated with the COVID 19 virus. Can you tell us all about it, please? So, we started with this product to develop it for HIV. And when we were successful with our phase one, two, and three, we hit our primary endpoint and we FDA looked at it, says you're ready for your final application for final approval. We submitted one third, FDA granted us rolling review. They had already given us fast track designation. So two more section needs to be submitted before the approval review starts. We hope to have approval by the end of the year, 2020. Now, when we were told by our scientists, mainly Dr. Bruce Patterson, Dr. Jayla Lazari, Dr. Scott Kelly, and so forth, that this product is going to have indication in cancer. So we immediately started the animal study, 98% re, uh, inhibition of metastasis, gave it to the FDA. FDA said, these are fantastic. We'll give you fast track designation and a phase two. We started that trial. The, the trial was is going very well. We asked for breakthrough designation meeting with FDA based upon very strong result. We did animal study in NASH. We did animal study in MS. And all of them are coming out very nicely because this product brings back the immune system. And it reduces inflammation, we believe. That's what we believe. And uh, then our scientist says, oh, my God, COVID virus, the people are dying because of ARDS. Acute respiratory distress syndrome in lungs. That's inflammation. That's all the cytokine storm that all of that storm, every component have CCR5. Now, if you bind to the CCR5 and you bind to the T regulatory CCR5 to you bind to the macrophages CCR5, then the cytokine storm goes down. You stop people from dying, perhaps. We said, well, we need to get that to the FDA. FDA says, well, we're going to have to go through the normal process of pre-IND because we had no animal data. But then the doctor from uh, Montefiore Medical Center, University Hospital of Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York, said, I read the published paper. I want this product right now. My patients are dying. He called the FDA, asked for emergency IND. FDA was skeptical, wanted to make sure that the safety is there, correctly so. And when he injected four patients, two patients extubated, one of them self-extubated within two to three days and got out of the ventilation. He immediately asked for more emergency IND, six more patients. The results, again, very nicely coming out. Now, these 10 patients are the severest of severe because they've tried everything and everything was not doing as good as the doctor wanted them to do so. When the word come out that this is what's happening and the FDA immediately said, you don't have to wait for your pre-IND. You can go to phase two randomized trial right now from mild to moderate. As more data came, FDA said, you know what? They're also going to give you a phase three for severe patient population. Started right now. We started uh, with giving the protocol. We got green light. We already enrolled five patients or so in the phase two randomized mild to moderate. And this morning we said, you know what's happening in California, very well known hospital, which we, the name will come out as we announced the name of in the past, that uh, they injected three patients a couple of few days ago. Two of them were mild and moderate, but in the hospital. And those two patients, they got off the oxygen and got discharged. And the next one extubated, no need for ventilator. They, the doctors from all the hospitals talked to each other. So they started calling us. We have over 60 uh, university hospitals, Harvard University hospitals, uh, you know, California, all of them, they're asking for the enrollment in, uh, to enroll in this study. And we have been giving them CDA, confidentiality disclosure agreement to sign and they start going forward. And we're going forward with many sites and we're very excited. But this morning, we did something that was very, very important. Our laboratory in Cell DX, Dr. Bruce Patterson, took the blood of the first seven patients at day zero before Lironlimab, at day three, and at day seven. And he saw immune, immunological benefit 
for all seven patients within three days and continue to seven days and cytokine storm decreased significantly. Now, this is very, very important to us. So our other doctors are reaching out to Dr. Anthony Fauci right now, trying to get the data in front of them. These folks are data driven. They don't want to hear anything but the data. Show me the data. So we have the data, Dr. Bruce Patterson, who is also, uh, he, I just, just want to mention that he's a former Stanford University professor, CCR5 expert, and has published many papers in the last 25 years. So we are very excited to hopefully let FDA know. We sent the data this morning to the FDA and the FDA hopefully will see that and see what is the appropriate steps to go forward. Mm -hmm. Wow, fascinating. So then the, the effect of Pro-140 is that it, it stimulates the immune system. It's not necessarily, doesn't have antiviral activity specifically against the coronavirus. It has a zero activity against the virus. It is not an antiviral. When we work on HIV, it binds to one of the immune cells, which is T cell. And HIV has to go through the T cell to copy itself. If you stop HIV from going to a T cell, you don't get any problem. It's a simple flu. But when it goes to the T cell, it copies a billion copy per day. We bind to CCR5, the antenna, the protein, the receptor, and therefore the virus can get to T cell and that way the virus cannot replicate. That's why we have great results and FDA gave us a green light to file for final approval. Mm -hmm. So we have a product that has safety. Over 840 patients took this product for HIV. Some patients have gone five and a half years without any uh, standard of care, but just this once a week, subcutaneous injection at home, self-injection at home. So our safety in that 840 patient showed that we had zero serious adverse event hmm. related to the drug. Wow. The only that's so that's a major point with FDA is, is it safe? That's, that's number one job for FDA. And they're doing a fantastic job right now because there's so many applications going to their office saying, hey, we got something for coronavirus. So our safety, they know very well, the same department, which is the Department of Infectious Disease, they know the safety product because we report to them at all times. This morning, we reported to them some efficacy data for coronavirus. That's fascinating. So in a best case scenario, let's say that the FDA does grant you a fast track status and approves your drug for general use. How fast would it take? How, I mean, how is this drug produced? How long would it take to produce, say, a million doses? That's why our doctors, like, for example, our, um, our chief science officer, Dr. Jacob Lalazari, who had done a lot of trials with Gilead, is very, very worried. And he said, I can't sleep at night because of this. How fast can we manufacture this? We have about 40,000 doses. Uh, I'm sorry, 40,000 vials, which is 20,000 doses. And we can make it, uh, make more product in uh, Seattle, AGC. And we also have Samsung Biologics who has already signed an agreement a year ago. So we have 600,000 to 700,000 vials ready this year. They're going to start sending it to us hopefully in June, July timeframe. We can expedite perhaps some of those. AGC already has the technology. Everything is approved through FDA. The commercial vials that we have right now are approved through FDA standards to be able to use for commercial use. Once we have approval, we don't have approval right now. Uh, and then, uh, so we can ramp those guys up and just get them to manufacture sooner. So we need to start right away. That's why the urgency, because if the FDA agrees with the data, and if they agree that this is something urgent, the company needs to urgently jump on the manufacturing side of it and make that expedite. Interesting. So then I'm guessing that this is not something that you will be able to pr produce worldwide demand for or service worldwide demand if the virus continues to incline upwards in terms of reach. Um, there's obviously a limit to what you can do this year. But in the future, let me ask you then, let's assume you can get all the manufacturing in place. It sounds like this, this, uh, this treatment has more applications than just coronavirus, HIV, for example, and also cancer. So this sounds like it could be, it could be huge. So let me disagree with you respectfully in the regards to this thing you said. You said that perhaps in next year we could be 
as I said, Samsung Biologics in Seoul, South Korea. We already have gone forward with them for a year. The technology is transferred. If I call Dr. Kim, the CEO and president, which I already have talked to him and said, be ready for this perhaps. They are the biggest, largest manufacturing of biologics in the world. Lonzo is also in that uh, level. 180,000 liter uh, they have available for producing this. If I call him, said I need 5 million bottles of this now, he will be able to produce it this year. Oh, and wow. he could produce it hopefully by August or September even. Don't hold me to those numbers, but we are looking at it. So we have enough right now to perhaps give to the patients, 20,000 or so patients who are in the United, United States, develop more uh, flexible data that FDA will say, okay, we feel now more comfortable. And then we, at the meantime, parallel to that, we can ramp up the manufacturing for now, for now. That's fascinating. Okay, well, that's great. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there, Nader, and uh, sounds like you're making great progress. We will come back to you in the near future and have a follow-up interview with you. Best of luck to you. Thank you for having me.